Welcome back to the Always Aggressive Podcast. Corey Fontana, head coach Tony Ersland. Uh, it's been a, been a bit, guys, uh, but uh, we've got plenty to talk about. First of all, before we get into that wrestling nonsense, Coach T- uh, uh, Tanner, how was your Thanksgiving? Interesting. That was interesting. <laughs> Look at this way. My wife was in uh, sunny Florida with the Purdue women's basketball team who had a really nice win over Florida State. Um, congrats to them. Um, but she was gone for five days. And so, uh, Zeke and I held down the fort and she had like her whole side of the family was in town for Thanksgiving. So I had the five-year-old and the in-laws while she was sunbathing. So, um, yeah, you know, we, we did all right. We hung in there. I ate some good food. You, you, you were busy, man. And uh, I'll say the same for us. It was, it was interesting because it, it, it was great. I mean, we didn't have to travel. We had been on the road or at home, right. For three weeks competing. And so it was nice to, to take a breath and enjoy the team had, we had a lot of guys over, you know, a lot of guys went home or took buddies with them, but we still had several guys over for Thanksgiving and girlfriends, you know what I mean? Yeah. That were in town to see, see the boys and then I had my parents in town and my brother as well and uh, you know when you're in season those moments don't come often enough so yeah a lot to be thankful for there uh time to relax and enjoy each other and now uh we're we're off and running we got some big things going on we're going to talk about I still never understood Urs how wrestlers do Thanksgiving in the middle of the season you know it's a uh it's a holiday that is celebrated with gluttony you know (laughs) People stuff themselves silly, you know, they, they, you know, they, they eat all the food, they take a nap, they do the food coma thing, they go back for pie, they do that. And uh, <clears throat> these guys are, you know, expected to make weight. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a tricky situation. Yeah, very tricky. Um, you know, but that's, that's why we took, took the, the week off. Um, not, not only just to enjoy the holiday, which I think was, was great for, for the guys, um, but to get ready for Vegas, which, you know, as I said, we'll talk about a little bit more in depth, but, um, you know, to have a chance to train again, right? Like you had, we had a good training cycle. We talked about that leading into the season. We were busy traveling two out of the three weekends and then hosted, right, a quad. So uh, now to take some time, fix a few things, make another jump, maybe in your shape um, was valuable for us. And, and I like where we're at uh, moving forward. So let's go back first, right, Corey? Yeah, we'll go back. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, Boilermaker Duels, November 21st, we hosted Brown, Bellarmine, Duke, and Northern Illinois for a full day of wrestling. Um, <clears throat> Boilermakers went 3-0, uh, won, uh, what did I say, 24 out of their 30 matches for the day, plus some extras. Um, <clears throat> overall, a pretty good day for the Boilermakers. Yeah, I, you know, I was I was happy with with uh, what we saw in terms of progression of guys executing and, and uh, again, you know, trying to be aggressive and go get their points, you know, not not thinking about wins and losses, obviously wins and losses are a byproduct, but kind of how you go about your business right like how you approach your matches and then how you execute has a lot to do with you getting your hand raised or not and we just tried to stay concerned with with execution, you know, getting after guys scoring points and being aggressive. And even regardless of outcomes, you know, we dropped a few matches, as you mentioned, but I was happy with our aggressiveness and, and kind of our attacks. A um, few guys to kind of point out and talk about. Uh, Devin Schroeder had a slow start to the season. You know, we went out east. He, he had decisions in his first two matches, didn't really open it up, um, didn't really get to his top game. Um, obviously, that has changed drastically. Um, I think I wanted to say he outscored his opponents like 42 to four in his three matches over the day with Boilermaker duels, um, you know, a shutout against uh, Duke, you know, 18, 0 beat 20, 20 to two against the, the young man from uh, Brown. Um, he, uh, he got out there and got after him. Yeah. And, and when I talk about progression, D's one of those guys, you really see him starting to hit his stride and look more like, you know, I don't want to say like he wasn't himself the first couple of matches, but he was working on some things. He was trying some different things and, you know, and uh, he, he wasn't quite clean in his, in his approach those first two matches. And I think you've seen more what he wants to be about as we work through the meat of our schedule, you know. And so uh, it was really nice to see him get back to putting up a lot of points uh, from top as well as on his feet. 
Um, in a similar vein, but in a different style, um, our guy Kendall Coleman uh, brought some fireworks to the party and, uh, and ripped off a ton of takedowns. I uh, had a tech fall, two major decisions, uh, scored a lot of points. Yeah, well, how many takes out, takedowns did he have on the day? Uh, 20, 23, is that what I said, 23? It was 23 or 24, and I believe Panola was hot on his heels for the day, too. Yeah. So we, we had a bit of a takedown, uh, you know, a tournament going on contest amongst the team, which was good, right? Like you, you like to see, again, the guys pushing themselves, and, and Kenny was one of those guys you could tell – he had made a noticeable jump um, from week one. We didn't have him for, for Cleveland State there, so he had, he had missed out. But you could tell in those two weeks that uh, he had made a noticeable jump in terms of, uh, you know, his execution in those matches and even how he handled his weight. I, I wasn't very happy going into Drexel, you know, the first time out. And, of course, he's coming off injury, right? There's always – you know, reasons, but, you know, he, he can't accept excuses and he just wasn't sharp. And so uh, he, he got himself in a much better frame of mind and place with his weight. And, and it showed like he really executed and looked sharp with those three matches on the day. One thing I, yeah. I want to jump in on, on, on Kenny before we move on. I, one thing I loved about him, and I mentioned this a couple of times during our broadcasts is, you know, he got the takedown. He was, he was working on a bunch of different stuff. And a lot of times he would, not a lot of times, a couple of times, he would get the takedown and immediately look for, you know, something on the mat, something to work on top. I'm looking for a cradle. I'm looking for a half. I'm looking for, and as soon as he realized, okay, it's not there right now, just cut him and let him go. Cause he, you know, like you said, Tony, very clearly wanted to work on some stuff and, mm -hmm. and, you know, spending 35 seconds on the mat trying to work into a cradle wasn't what he was wanting to work on on that day. He was going to go for it if it was there, but but it was more important to get the work and to, you know to get the reps. It seemed like. No, I, I would agree. He he really was on his toes and looked like he had more purpose. You know, to your point with his wrestling, and that's what you want, right? He he knew what he wanted to do in terms of his execution, and he pushed himself even from a pace and, and scoring points uh, perspective too. So. I liked, uh, you know, a lot of what I saw out of Kenny. Yeah, I did. I, and that was important to us. We'd been emphasizing that coming out of the Drexel uh, duel in that weekend about, you know, some changes he needed to make. And it showed up. And I think he's in a really good, uh, good place. He's very excited, and he should be uh, going into this Vegas tournament. So you talked about, you know, you brought up Panola, you brought up Kenny, and um, probably a good time to, to, to do our overall takedown leaders for the season. Let these guys kind of know where they're at. Uh, Panola is in the driver's seat. Panola has 31 takedowns through six matches. He uh, he had 19 in his three matches at Boilermaker Duels. He was he was on pace. Uh, was it his Was it the Northern Illinois match where he reeled off like eight in the third period? Tony, is that the right one? Man, it, yeah, yeah. You're saying yes. Yes, you're right. That yeah, the kid kind of broke pretty hard in that yeah. third period, and it was a lot. Uh, come out front, go around behind, come out front, go around behind situation. It was it was pretty pretty savage, but he got after it. Uh, Kendall has vaulted himself into second. He's up to 26 takedowns. Uh, Parker Phileas, who had the lead going into the Boilermaker Duels, um, is now third with 21. And uh, Matt Ramos, who is unfortunately, he's he's had to take a couple forfeits. Yeah. Um, so that's that slowed his pace. He is uh, He's fourth with 15. So um, through, through no fault of his own, as you yeah. said, I'm catching right. a couple forfeits, one at Cleveland State, and then again, um, it's Northern. No way, I believe, right? Yeah. That, that's just a bummer because he, he's very dynamic on his feet and exciting to watch. And so you do, you feel like he's been shortchanged through no fault of his own. Right. So um, it will be fun to watch those guys because, like you said, there's a little bit of uh, there's a little bit of chatter on the bench, and you know of, of who's gonna who's gonna come out on top of that list, and uh, and that kind of competition um, can only be good for your room. Yeah, just just pushing yourself. I mean, that's all you want. And, you know, as we talk about, it's it's progression, right? Like getting better week to week uh, as you go, and and um, it the way you push yourself is through your goals and your motivation. You know, you got to have a why. And, and so you're always looking at ways to motivate yourself. And, and if it's, Hey, 
you know, I want to score a few more takedowns and attack here, um, you know, because we got a nice contest going on the team. Then I, then I love that. You know, I, I love that. You know, I love these guys pushing each other and kind of giving each other reasons why they should push and, 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 and continue to score and be aggressive. Um, staying in the vein of scoring, uh, our guy, Michael Wolf, uh, stepping in a heavyweight for us, went out and got another fall. He's, uh, he's up to four on the year in six matches. Um, it'll be interesting to see him, uh, you know, continue to progress against heavyweights and 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 uh, put those bonus points out there on the on the field. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, Wolf's interesting. You know, he uh, he unfortunately gave up the, the the one loss. Right, he got pinned going for something that might not have been there. But I love his attitude again. There's an aggressiveness to his wrestling, and it's his own style. Uh, and he's very comfortable in it and believes in it. And you can tell confident in that. And that's the part I love. You know, it kind of bit him in the tail a little bit against Duke. But, man, the guy's dangerous. And he really understands where he's good and, and how he needs to wrestle from those positions. So, yeah, he, he continues to kind of impress. And, again, I think he'll he'll refine some things at the heavyweight weight class where he'll figure out, you know, maybe, you know, this position I can be aggressive. But others, I, I've got to kind of tone it down and just hold position with these big guys. Absolutely. Um, anything else from the duels? It was a crazy day having, I mean, throwing that extra team in there and going four rounds instead of three, that was wild. Um, but I thought overall it ran pretty smooth. We got in and out. Um, everybody made their flights home. Uh, yep. and it was good to see, uh, it was good to see Tom Erickson and Glenn Lanham, even if it was kind of brief. Yeah, no, it was great. Um, you know, five teams in, as you said, a lot of work, and it seemingly went off without a hitch. We ran ahead of schedule basically most of the day and got some extra matches in or some other guys. So I, I'd call it a great success. Uh, the team, um, you know, like you said, has has been progressing and looked good, uh, looked sharp, uh, great attitudes. Like they're excited about what they're doing, uh, even though it was a long day. And, and so you know, overall, I feel like we're in a very good place. You know, we could highlight a lot of guys. I mean, for sure. you know, Evan is still undefeated. Ramos is undefeated. Parker Phileas is undefeated. So we're get, getting a lot of production out of the guys, you know, in the middle. Um, you know, Trey Cruzy uh, had a little bit of a tougher schedule with some some ranked guys in the fine silver, but I thought he really competed well. And as a freshman, really in the lineup for the first time as a, as a regular right now, you know, he's going to learn. He's going to really learn. Each each match is about a learning experience for him, just as long as he's competing and going out and being aggressive, getting after people. We already noted Kenny. Um, I think, you know, Amos Sunland. Um, a couple wins. A couple wins. And, and I think I, figuring out that he could be aggressive and score points. I mean, yeah. when he was taking shots, he was scoring. He was dangerous. It's just to see that he is dangerous when he's attacking and, and trying be a little more aggressive in his matches and that's the one thing i throw that out for him if, if he if he watches this thing and he knows it when he's attacking he's got great skills he's in shape he just he needs to keep being aggressive um, because when he does good things happen for himself and he needs to trust that um you know garrett uh was really good to uh you know he wrestled again another quality opponent uh, made a I thought Russell a very good first period and then made, made a mistake. You can't make against those good people letting the leg in yep. and getting turned, you know? And so hopefully these are learning experiences for him where he feels good about the way he came out and was attacking and created a lot of positive situations for himself. So even though, you know, we lost the match, I'm telling you the way he came out and set a tone in that first period in attacking was really positive. He just he made a mistake he didn't he didn't recover from right um, from the from the bottom position and and you know he needs to just learn and grow from that. When we see that guy again, uh, he'll be ready and he knows. I mean he knows. So and Jared actually he bounced back really nice against the Kaufman kid from Northern Illinois. Yeah, um, yeah. You know had that really very nice, solid kid, really nice flurry at the end of regulation of to uh, to get that takedown and finish on top. Yeah, no doubt. He, he got in, he got big, you know, got the kid off his feet. And, 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 you know, when you're scrambling, you know, Garrett loves that stuff. He's very comfortable there. And we take Garrett more times than not on the scramble. So um, created a situation for himself where he could really, you know, uh, get points. And so that was, that was, a, he should, even though, like I said, the one on loss on the day, um, he got a feel for a guy that we're going to need to beat right you know, at the national tournament. And that's a good thing. Same for, uh, 
Same for Max Lyon. Um, saw an All-American from last year in the Northern Illinois kid, Britt, Britt Wilson. Uh, positive. That kid's very good on top. And, and he got away a couple times. He, he gave up, uh, he made a, a tactical mistake on his feet that, that cost him the match, which I know Max will correct. But again, very positive. When you see this guy and he's, he's top and, and we got away, that, that's a very positive thing because, hey, we, we can get away. That's not a problem. And we can correct what happened on our feet. So, so that was, that was a, again, I think still a very positive thing from the day for, for Max. And I know, you know, that's the thing, right? When you're getting better, you got to pull these things away that serve you, serve you well down the road. Panola was dominant, as we said, and we talked about Wolf as well. So like overall, good deal, you know, happy and excited with where we're at going into Vegas. Real, real quick note on, on Garrett and Max, both of those losses, I, I, you know, you sometimes, especially early in the season, you can learn as much from loss watching a guy after a loss as you can from, from, you know, dominant win and, and in Garrett's case and in Max's case both in those losses they weren't mad they were frustrated they were frustrated with like especially Garrett the look on his face he was so annoyed with himself because he knew the mistake he made <laughs> and he knew you can't do that against a guy like that and yep. like you said coach he, you know take that and work with it and correct it and move forward so you know next time but but they know in the moment and and they're just yep. dang it one got away you know? Yeah. And then that's the thing you hate to let things get away. Um, but again, it should be really positive for those guys coming out of those matches because it should drive them, right? Like there's, there's motivation. There's a why there about what, how you got to fix some things and, and understand, you know, when you wrestle people, there's certain positions that you, you you're not going to wrestle from, or you're going to try to keep, keep them out of, or that learn how really to, up. and certainly Garrett, that leg in from on top with fine silver is one, you know, you, we want to close off our pockets. We don't want to let that leg in. Or if the leg comes in, where, where do we take the wrestling? You know, and mm -hmm. similar for Max. So, again, those things all serve their purposes if they, if they handle it the right way. Yeah. Um, moving from the past to the future, uh, we uh, take off tomorrow for the Cliff Keem Las Vegas Invitational. Um, December 3rd and 4th will be aired live on Flow Wrestling. Uh, should be a fantastic, fantastic tournament. Um, about half of the top 25 in tournament rankings uh, will be in the field. Um, well over 120 ranked wrestlers amongst the 10 weight classes, uh, including several of our guys. Um, should be just an incredible two days of competition. Yeah, it, it always is, right? I mean, it's just, it's a great opportunity to see good competition and push yourself. And for us, it's the last competition before we go into final exams, right? Reading week and then final exams. So uh, something that, that you know, uh, we consider important, right? Because you're going to see so many good people that we might not see again. You know, th there's going to be a, a good contingent of Big Ten teams that we'll see later as well. But a lot of teams, you know, from out West, especially that I know we won't see again. And so like, important for us in terms of uh, opportunity to make a mark that'll help you uh, well down the road into nationals. So the big 10 teams in question, uh, that'll be there, Michigan, Northwestern, Ohio state, uh, Minnesota, and Nebraska are all scheduled to be, uh, to be out there. Um, some other highlights, uh, Cornell is scheduled to be there. Um, Cal Poly is going to have some of their top guys there. Um, Princeton is another, you know, another, another tough team that'll have some, some really good people out there. Oklahoma, uh, Utah Valley and there, they've got a few really tough kids that, that should be there. So, um, again, should be a fantastic field, uh, should be a lot of fun. Um, action starts, uh, I want to say, what did I say? 10 a.m. On, on, on Friday, Tony? Does that sound right? I thought it was 9 a.m. to tell you the truth. Hold on. Could be. Itinerary, professional grade right here. Is that local mountain time? <laughs> Man, somebody really sharp must have made that, Tony. Yeah. Hmm. Says we are wrestling in round one at 9 a.m., buddy. So, 9 a.m. So it'll be noon Eastern for those that are, that, are, that are back here in the homeland. It'll be 9 a.m. local time. Uh, we'll get going. Um, I'll have... Uh, I'll have various previews and links and all that stuff uh, up for people to check out here in the next couple of days on produceboards.com. 
But um, yeah, it should be a lot of good stuff. Uh, one fun topic, and, and I know that this is something that Tony often skirts away from, Corey, so we may have to drive the conversation here. Uh, tournament pre-seeds should nah. come out tomorrow. Uh, I was wondering Wednesday. about that, yep. Um, and uh, I'm really, really interested to see how they shake out because I feel like this year more so than maybe – years in the past i think there's some disparity amongst the rankings on the different services so i don't know where they're going to pull from the most to see who is going to be ranked or seated where yeah i I think you're right um you know let's face it coming off covid you had a lot of teams that didn't compete right or you were conference only so see each other and so you're going, you're guessing a lot, right? You're giving kids credit in some, in some instances for what happened two years ago, right? They're sure. holding ranking still because they didn't compete last year in the case of the Ivies or, or other schools. And, and now this is the first real significant, you know, um, get together for all of these teams. There's, there's obviously been some good duels out there early on, but, but not a ton, right? I mean, this is going to be a really good first test as far as a lot of people that that in deep brackets and how that shakes out. So I think you're right where there's a lot of disparity amongst different rankings. And, you know, you alluded to it. It's great for the fans and it's great for you guys. Um, You know what, you know, we we just want to get our guys in the bracket and and show up and wrestle that, you know, that's where we're at with it, but I'm sure fun for you guys, you know, to, to kind of look at matchups and different things uh, like that over the course of the two days. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the guys in particular that I talk about would be, you know, Devin Schroeder, Devin's seven, the intermat. And I think he's 15 via flow wrestling. And so it's like, okay. And then like, they know he's wrestling, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, (laughs) so it's like, where is he going to land when the, when the pre-seeds come out and like, and so on and so forth. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I, I made the comment, you know, flow wrestling's got him ranked behind two guys who he has never lost to and has never finished behind in a tournament. <laughs> Ever. They're making a, they're making a choice. And so, I, I mean, while I agree that rankings need to be based on this year, and, you know, you need to, you know, prioritize things that happened this year. Um, it, it leaves me scratching my head quite a bit. And, uh, and that's dangerous for me because I don't have any hair. And so <laughs> I I said, you can tell you've scratched that head a lot. Yeah. Uh, that. Like, you know, it's not like, you know, Tony scratches his head. You can't tell. Like, it's in, it's in his hair. If I scratch <laughs> my head, you can see I got red marks. Like, it's not, it's not good. So, um, yeah, well, I'm really curious to see where that stuff all comes out. Um, Like I said, I I anticipate, I anticipate probably seven of our guys to have, uh, to have maybe top eight, top 10 pre-seeds at various weights. So I think we'll, we'll get in there with a good chance to, to swing for the fences. Um, I guess this is a question for you, Tony, like our last trip to Vegas was a very, very successful one um and and we're taking a lot of the same guys back uh how how does that how does doing well there before kind of affect the team here as as we go into another tournament in the same place even though you know you do have some different guys in the lineup there's gonna be different teams can be different it's a different year right yeah well, I just think it's it's positive in terms of this. There's good vibes there. We've done well. We know what to expect, right? You're familiar with the format and what's going to go on. You know, like all of those things lead to you feeling good, you know what I mean, as you go into the tournament. Like, because we've done well in that situation before with with three three finalists, you know, um, one of who, who's back, right, in Devon. So, no, I, I think there's a, a comfortability and a familiarity there that will serve us well. Um, but these guys are very confident. They have every right to be um, not because of what we did two years ago. Right. But it's because of how they're wrestling now. You know, they're 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 trained hard and they're prepared. And, you know, they they have every uh, expectation, I know, as a group to do well. But certainly having done well there in the past, you know, lends to the good vibes. Uh, one fun note, uh, Devin Schroeder is already a two time place winner out of Vegas. 
Um, he looks to join a uh, prestigious club of, of only four other wrestlers in program history that went out there and placed three times. So that's a cool goal for him to go chase. Um, and Kendall Coleman, you know, took fourth as a freshman out there two years ago in a really tough bracket at 157. Um, and so if he can go out there and repeat, that puts him into a, a group of pretty elite company at Purdue as well. So very excited for those two guys. Um, any bracket in particular, you know, I don't know how much you've really looked, Tony. Any bracket in particularly that you're really excited to see shake out from a, from a national wrestling perspective? No. <laughs> I'm sorry to kill your, <laughs> Come on, give me something. I'm sorry to kill your, your, your mojo on that question, buddy. Um, you, you know, we're just you're in the middle of preparing uh, with the guys. And so, you know, if you're watching film or watching it, certain guys, like looking forward, no, I don't really know yet. Right. Who's going to be there. You know, sure. Sick, hurt, up away. You know, I'll use a, a, a guy like Cornell uh, Arusha, right. It was yeah. 25 early. And now he's been up at 33 here recently. Like you just don't know at this point. So for me, um, it's get the guys ready, make sure they're prepared. The weight's under control. They're, 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 they're d- disciplined in their thoughts, right? They're thinking right. And, and their body's ready to go. And then when the brackets come out, you know, as coaches, we'll look, we'll look at some things and, and where guys are at. And, you know, just from a standpoint of scouting people, how you want to approach maybe a match here or there, you know, we don't want to change drastically who you are, but just maybe some things, how you want to approach a match, how you want to wrestle it. Um, that's, that's when that, that work for us starts, but right now, man, it's, it's, to me, it's wasted energy because you don't even know how it's going to shake out. And, and even once you draw the bracket, do you really want to even look down the road because he may not be there? So I tell the guys all the time, like, why get ready for a guy who may not even be there? And now you've been thinking about something else. It's truly the old adage of it's just one match at a time is the most important thing. Because you look past the guy, you get beat, or you expect the guy to be there and he isn't, and then you're not ready. So I guess that's that's the answer to my question about why no, you know, I'm, I'm we're just getting ready to show up and 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 uh, and go to go to go to battle. Corey, I'm not sure that Tony always understands the purpose of a podcast and and uh, <laughs> and what we're trying to do here. But um, but you guys I, go I, ahead. Go. You I appreciate him nonetheless. <laughs> I appreciate him nonetheless. Uh, on the um, bright side we're not responsible for selling tickets at Vegas. So we, we don't need to, you know, we don't really need him to, to pump it up that bad. That's, that's true. That's true. <laughs> um, I will say one, uh, and, and this is for our own selfish reasons. I am excited to see what happens at 133. I'm very, you know, Matt Ramos, like we said, yep. he's been robbed of two, two opportunities to compete so far. And I, um, I'm excited to get him out there against the national field. And, you know, he did, he's already beaten one ranked opponent. And the fact that he, uh, he beat um, Richie Kohler from Ryder. Um, yep. in a very, exciting, qualifier. very exciting match national qualifier. Yeah. Um, was a top 25 guy at the time, yep. Um, yep. you know, took him to, you know, had to battle back late in the third period and took him to overtime and pinned him. And so um, I'm excited to see him get out there against, you know, some of the top ranked kids in the country and, and go to work there. That'll be fun. Um, and Thomas Panola is another one. I think 97 should be a really, a really good field. If, uh, if everybody shows up from the teams that are coming. And so it'll be, uh, it'll be exciting to let him go out there and, and lock horns with, with some of those studs and, and uh, make his mark. Yep. No, I would agree in terms of this, when you talk about excitement, I mean, it's excitement for our guys, which, you know, obviously I'm all about. I just think um, you, a guy like Ramos, you know, he's the bad draw. You know, he's not, he's not highly ranked right now, shown some good things, had, had a couple of solid kids that he's beaten. Um, but, you know, he's, I know he's really excited for this, this, uh, this tournament. I mean, he turned down an opportunity to go, to go wrestle at Pan Ams this weekend. He got asked mm-hmm. actually because of his, freestyle performance and decided that, you know, um, and it was his choice. I mean, we said, Hey Matt, you know, if you want to do, do? Horses, that's a great opportunity. And, and he wanted to be here for, for the opportunity that it is, um, you know, for his season. And so he's really excited and, 
you know, he's dangerous, right? I, I think that for all of our guys, like our, our guys are dangerous. You know, they're, they're a bad draw for anybody, despite the number in front of somebody's name, you know, that somebody's opinion, you know, is, uh, yeah. you know, they're, they're the bad draw and that's the way they got to look at it. They're, they're dangerous. For sure. Everything you said, uh, uh, everything you just said about Panola and, and Ramos is, is why I'm excited about Parker Phileas too. Same deal. Absolutely. There's seven or eight guys that are all ranked right there, you know, from six to 15. And, and Parker's got a chance to, to announce to, you know, the world what we've seen so far this year. Yeah. As, New, as Nuke Lelouch once said, I want to announce my presence with authority. <laughs> I don't. I don't think we want to go the route that uh, Nuke went that day. No. Yeah, I mean, no. When, when you're quoting Bull Durham, I'm not sure. I mean, where 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 that takes the level of this podcast at this point. But I'll let the public decide that. It's interesting though. You're pulling Bull Durham out at a moment like this. Yeah. Hey, you know, when when the opportunity arises to quote Nuke Lelouch, I don't think yeah. you, I don't think you pass it up. No, no, no. My opinion. Yeah. Well, and, and as Corey just said, like, you know, there's a lot of guys. And that's the great thing about this team. You could talk about a lot of guys. I mean, Parker is a guy that is that is right there, you know, with anybody. You know, his preparation is as good as anybody. His attitude, how he approaches his sport, like, you know, he's and he's off to a great start. So there's there's just a lot of excitement for many guys. And that's what's awesome is that we go into this tournament with expectations up and down the lineup um, for what it can be. Sure. One other, um, one other quick note on, on Vegas. Um, okay, I like it. Of course, uh, Nebraska's there, so, you know, you've got plenty of personal ties to that coaching staff, but a couple other former assistants or, or Boilermakers going to be there with, with Columbia, Zach Tinelli, going to be, uh, gonna be yeah. in the house, and Luke Welch on the Citadel staff. So, uh, you know, uh, I right. know wrestling's kind of a it's, a, it's a small community. Wrestling coaching's a, a tight community, but, you know, it's a really cool thing of these events to even if you get a few minutes with like yep. you did last week with, with big cat and with Glenn Lanham or two weeks ago, um, just to be able to get a little time with, with, uh, with a couple guys is, is a pretty cool sort of side aspect of, of these events. I would think. A hundred percent. And I'm, and I'm really looking forward to it just from that standpoint as well. I mean, um, we had a season last year and we, well documented how different it was so just to be again in this uh building with 40 plus coaches from around the country is gonna be gonna be a lot of fun anyway you know we'll all be focused on our athletes but there's always as you just mentioned Corey, those few minutes here and there to catch up and see how guys are doing and and, and see some faces you haven't seen in a while necessarily yeah um since we're going to vegas i think this is always the fun question you know like we're going to get out there. Uh, do you plan on doing any gambling or something? Ah, um, listen, I, I like blackjack. You know, if I can steal a few minutes, you know, uh, we're on an off day on, since we're flying out tomorrow, you know, Thursday, we'll have a little bit of time. You know, I, I might sit down and just enjoy a few hands of blackjack. I'm not a, a big gambler by any means, but I don't mind sitting down and playing a few, a few hands and enjoying myself. There you go. Corey, Corey, what's your game? I like blackjack as well, but uh, I suck at it. So, <laughs> <laughs> is it the math that you have trouble with? It is. It, it's really high, dude. I've only got ten fingers. Makes like, counting. You, you, you take your get it. you take your shoes off of the table. They frown. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, you know, we didn't get to do Vegas last year, and I know it's always a you know, it, it cuts both ways. Like, you know, it's a great tournament with a lot of awesome matches, a lot of awesome competition, but it's also a good time. You know, it's, it's a fun, it's a fun thing to, to take some of the guys out there and, you know, and do some different things and uh, experience a part of the country that some of them have never been to and, and so on and so forth. So I do yep. know that I am looking forward to, uh, I'm going to get my hands on some In-N-Out Burger. That's, uh, that's going to happen. And, uh, and uh, the weather's supposed to be quite a bit better than it is here. So I'm looking forward to some temperatures in the 70s, uh, you know, maybe some short sleeve shirts. Who knows? They may get crazy, get some shorts out. Who knows? Don't, 
Don't get too nuts. You come back sunburned. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'd love to I think the pool. I think the pool is going to be closed, Corey, say, unfortunately. You get no sympathy from anybody here if you come back sunburned, just so you know. <laughs> I, may, I may walk over your office just to smack you on top of that head in case. Hey, no, I always put sunscreen on the head. Right, right, always. Right. Always put sunscreen on the head. <laughs> well, fellas, uh, are we good? We happy with uh, with where we're at here? Can't wait to get out to Vegas. Yeah, no, it was great to catch up. As you guys mentioned, uh, start off the program we'd missed here a couple weeks. Very busy, a lot going on, especially with holidays and stuff. Um, but uh, but yeah, excited, looking forward uh, to what's going to happen the next month as we wrap non conference competition. For sure. We'll travel safely, bring back some hardware. We can't wait, can't wait to watch from a distance and uh, and and see those boilermakers just uh, survive an event. We'll we'll catch up next week to talk about all the great things and all the money that Tanner lost out at the uh, out, of, out in, in uh, fabulous Las Vegas, guys. We'll God, I hope not. <laughs> Boiler up. <laughs>